Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Praise Yahweh for the good weather that we are having and beautiful Shabbat that we're having here. I wanted to go over a message today called Yahweh's Timing. And I'm going to start in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, and the first eight verses. To all there is an appointed time, even a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pull up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to let wander. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sew together. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. So, one of my favorite uh, verses, what I just read... Because I think it's so great. It really, when you're reading it, you're reading it really, what it's showing is it's Yahweh's timing. You know, that so many things in life, uh, like we talked about with emotions so many times, you know, that emotions are trigger points. And they're there we to control our emotions but not suppress them. You know, that there's a time for everything. There's a time for everything. And I know probably uh, in this room, you know, everybody in this room, there's somebody that you're missing. You know, there's somebody that you wish you could be with. There's somebody, or maybe somewhere you wish you could be at a certain time, which is normal. Probably just about everybody in the world is that way. You know, if not, somebody would be pretty lonely. <laughs> if they're somewhere and they just don't think of anybody, you know, if, if they're by yourself. And this scripture, you know, we, we're out of Babylon now, uh, about 14 years. And this scripture that I read before we left America, Babylon, really, really helped me to keep things in perspective. You know, I remember when we were leaving, and it was very hard on my parents, you know, because we're a very close family, and I remember telling my mom that, from now on, I said, we're not going to have quantity of time, but we're going to have quality of time. You know, so we're not going to see each other every day, but when we do see each other, you know, there are going to be points to it. And as time has went on, it wasn't that I stopped missing my family, because I love my family. But I would think to myself, sometimes when you feel like you're missing somebody, think on the other side. Okay, so now, what if you get to see that person? You know, then what? Like my family, I loved my family, but what would happen after I saw my family? <laughs> my family's not converted. My family aren't believers. What's going to happen then? So I stop the work of Yahweh, I stop everything I'm doing, I stop my bearing fruit, and I sit around uh, the table with my family, you know. So again, when I would see my family every year, every two years or whatever, it was great. You'd see each other for a few days, and that was the time to see them. That was the time to spend with them. That was the time to honor my parents. But after those days were over, I was ready to move on. I was ready to get back to the work of Yahweh. See, and that's the thing that, that you have to think about. And i said this many times. People spend most of their time regretting the past or worrying about the future. And when you do that, you, you miss the now. You miss the now. And that's Yahweh's timing. That's Yahweh's timing. If you remember, I'm going to refer a couple of times in this message to something that uh, Sharon said when she was here. You know, it's a great time to be me. You know, and it's a great time to be you. It's a great time to be you. Do you realize that one-third of the Bible is prophecy? This Bible is pretty thick. One-third, one out of every three pages, if you do it on average, is prophecy. Ninety percent of that prophecy is for the time we're living in right now. Ninety percent of it. And ninety percent of the prophecy is about what? It's about Yahweh redeeming this land of Israel, redeeming the people of Israel, and redeeming the covenant. That's what most of what's happening in the end time. And I say that to people. I don't care what church, religion, whatever you believe. But if you're not following, if you're not understanding, if you're not praying, if you have no concept of what Yahweh is doing in Israel in the end times, then you have no concept of what Yahweh is doing. 
Because most of what he's doing in the times we're living in is right in this land. So now when you think about that, what an honor to be here. Yeah, it's a great time to be me. It's a great time to be you. You know why? Because there are thousands upon thousands of brethren around the world, and it's a great time to be them too if they're first fruits. It's a great time to be the person who's not a first fruit yet, but will be called through the work we're doing here. It's a great time to be the Christian that may not be a first fruit, but will live through the tribulation and actually be here when Yeshua's here and be the first human being in his kingdom. So it's a great time to be a lot of people. But when we're, our mind is focused on there's a time for war, there's a time for peace. And during the time of war, if you're thinking about peace, you know what's going to happen? You're going to get your, slit, your, your throat slit. You're going to die. And if it's the time for peace, like the time when Solomon, there was peace in the whole kingdom, and you're a warmonger like Joab, what happened? You got your throat slit. Because during the time of peace, we don't need a Joab. And during the time of war, you don't need somebody who is afraid to fight. There's a time for peace, there's a time for war. There's a time for one thing, there's a time for everything. So I said, by understanding everything in our life, when you're a first fruit, it's always timing. You've got to embrace it. You've got to embrace it, because if you don't embrace this fact, you will never live to fulfill the potential that Yahweh has for you. So, the first thing we think of also, like I said, there's nothing wrong with, with missing people. There's nothing wrong with thinking of situations. You know, maybe thinking of a feast. There's many people that during the year, what gets them through the year, is thinking of the memory of being here in Israel. And the fact that, well, I'll be there again in a few months, you know, when the next feast. But the first thing we want to think of is, is it even in the will of Yahweh what we're missing? You know, if we're missing unconverted relatives, if we're missing people that are not going to draw us closer to Yahweh, if we're missing people that, you know, have no interest in the work of Yahweh, is it really going to make you stronger? And that's why I say, what if Yahweh wishes? Remember I did a, a, a message a while back, watch what you pray for. What if Yahweh gives you that prayer? And like I said, there's no one on this earth that loves their family more than I do. But I thank Yahweh that he took me out of Babylon when he did. I, I mean, I have hundreds of cousins and uncles and aunts, and I love every one of them. But not one of them has anything to do with the work of Yahweh. So my work is the work of Yahweh, my will. Like I was saying to somebody a few days ago, when we left Babylon, we never built another life outside of Babylon. You know, beside our relationship with my parents, I have no other life. Not even my brothers, and I love my brothers. They're good people. If they called me anything they need, but I have no life with my brothers. You know, I don't talk to them hardly ever, never see them, you know, unless maybe once every year or two. And like I said, I love them. I do anything for them. But I have, there's really no, no, no life there anymore, because my life is the work of Yahweh. My life is the work of Yahweh, and your life should be the work of Yahweh. Greatest time in the world to be you, because you're here. And the other thing is, we're not going to be here forever. There's a time for everything. There's a time for everything. Today we're sitting here in the Sea of Galilee, you know, as part of a wonderful work of Yahweh. You could blink your eye and tomorrow you can be in a prison somewhere in Romania. You could be somewhere in South America. You could be dead, you know. So who knows? Who knows what tomorrow is bringing? But today you're here. Today you're here. Today you're part of something that you know Yahweh is doing because everything Yahweh is doing is here in the land of Israel in the end time. Absolutely everything Yahweh is doing. So you want to embrace it because it's not always going to be here. There's a time to be in Israel. There's a time to be out of Israel. Everything is a time for Yahweh. Like I said, all, all the scripture is telling us is Yahweh's timing. And this is the key to life. You've got to embrace Yahweh's timing. As a spirit-filled child of Yahweh, and we're going to see from the examples here, every single thing in your life, every step, every day, every situation, is being set by Yahweh and His Spirit for you. The key is, are you going to understand and embrace it and fulfill your will to it? Or are you going to be sorrowful that you're not doing something else? And like I said, remember, most people in life, 
will lose most of their time regretting the past or worrying about the future. And when you do that, you lose the now. Because the past is never coming back. Good, bad, or indifferent. Hey, we got to go back to the days of the 1940s. It's never coming back again. They're gone. And the future isn't here yet. And if all we know, we can die this very day. So we can't worry about the future or regret the past. We have to do the now. We have to bear the fruit now while we have the opportunity. And the other thing you have to think about is that everything that we do desire, if it's rightly so, like I said, nothing wrong with desiring to be around our loved ones, nothing wrong with desiring, you know, many people desire to be here in the land of Israel, nothing wrong for, for these desires. But we have to realize that whatever we are missing, Yahweh will restore sometime either in this life or the next life. So for me, I think to myself, hey, you know what? I had pretty good parents. Praise Yahweh for that. And I'll have an eternity to spend with my parents when the timing is right. But if I don't fulfill Yahweh's purpose in my life, I might not be there. And how terrible that would be when the kingdom comes to have my parents resurrected in the white throne judgment and be there, and all of a sudden their son's not there. Because I disqualified myself as a first fruit because I didn't fulfill the will that Yahweh had in my life. Remember, too much is given, much is expected. The more that's given, the more will be required. And to unconverted relatives, they have a much lower bar. They have a different judgment. But for us, that Yahweh has opened up our mind, He's got a great purpose, He's working, and we have to fulfill that. We have to walk in faith and fulfill that. Like we always say, Yahweh is my shepherd. I shall not lack. When we're sorrowful, to the point where we're not being able to really function, Yahweh is not my shepherd anymore. We're denying the scripture. Yahweh is my shepherd. I shall not lack more than I shall not want. I shall not lack. Which means when Yahweh is my shepherd, there's nothing I lack. That if you were on a desert island for the next 30 years, if you're in a prison somewhere, like I said, in Romania or Russia, if you're being tortured on the other side of the world, you're lacking nothing because Yahweh is your shepherd. Because Yahweh is with you every step of the way. Because as we were saying here, because we, we embrace to the fullest extent the blood of our Savior Yeshua that He shed for us right here in this land almost 2,000 years ago. By being overly depressed, we deny Him and we lose focus of the goal. With Yahweh, that should be all we need. With Yahweh, that will be all we need. Because, you know what? One thing is certain in this life, we're all old enough to know this, that people will die, people will move away, people will fall away. It's part of life. We have to learn to be content with Yahweh alone. And unfortunately, through life, I've seen it. I've seen people, a husband and wife, very, very strong couple. Boom. One dies, the other one falls away. How could Yahweh allow this? How could he allow this one to die? For 6,000 years, everyone dies. We're not eternal. What do you mean, how can he allow it to die? You know, it's going to happen. We have to get used to it. We have to have it in our mind. People will die. That's part of life. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. People move away. You know, like I said, you never see in, in the Bible where a congregation, one particular group of people is the congregation they're there together. Today we're all here together. Next year it could be different people. You could be somewhere else. You could be starting a congregation. You could be leading a congregation. You know, like I said, you could be in a prison. Who knows? But we know that the congregation of Yahweh is a spiritual organism. It's not an organization. And unfortunately, people will fall away. So what is going to cause you to fall away? The fact that your pastor, your best friend, your husband, your wife, your child, they fell away. Not me. Not me. Because I know on Judgment Day, the only one that's going to be before me is Yahweh. And I pray every day of my life that Yeshua will be there on my right, right side as my holy advocate before the Father to defend me before Him by His shed blood. And that's all that matters. I pray for my family every day. Pray for my wife. Pray for my daughter. Pray for my friends. Pray for you. But in the end of the day, everyone has to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. And 
we're heading into a time, the worst time the world will ever know. And chances are that somebody you know will be dead, 100%, or fall away or something else. Chances are most of us will be dead if 99% of the people are going to die. So we've got to get used to it. You've got to mentally be strong enough to know it's not about this life. It's not about these few measly days that come and go, you know, 60, 70, 80 years maybe. It's not about that. It's about the kingdom of Yahweh that's coming. It's about Daniel 2.44 that when Yeshua returns, he will crush every kingdom of this earth to the ground, the stone cut without hands, and that that kingdom will go on forever. And each of us has been called for a job now, today. We've all been here several years, and we always say all the time, why me? I can't believe he called me. But we're past that point. We all can't believe it. It's unbelievable. You know? It's not about why he called me. And like I always say, I understand exactly why he called me. Because he calls the weak of the world. That's why he called me. Of course he would call me. Praise Yahweh. I'm glad I couldn't get any weaker, and that's why he could make me stronger. If I was a real strong person, then he wouldn't have called me. So we know why he called us. Because he gets the glory when he can work with people like us. But now we're past there. Now we know. He called us. We worked on our spiritual gifts. We know what we can do. We know what we can't do. And now is the time to work. Because if you're not working, you're going to fall away. You know, there's a time to rest. There's a time to work. And this is the time to work. I've met many p people who are single. And they're depressed because they're not married. I tell you, when, like I said, when I first became a believer, I was a young man, 18, 19 years old. Had 170-something single men in the congregation, one single woman. <laughs> wow, talk about her schedule. Make a date, you have to do it six months out, <laughs> you know, to get a date to services. But people were always depressed. I was never depressed as a single, you know. Because I would say, hey, the way not to be depressed is serving other people. Every month, I would have a, a dinner over my house. I'd invite a, a family, I'd invite a widow, I'd invite a single person. And I, I try to serve. That's the way you stop from being depressed. And then, you know, like I said, singles are depressed and are married, and then people get married. And you know what? They're depressed because they don't have kids. Oh, they only had a kid if I only had a child. And then you have a child, and you know what? They're depressed because they don't have more child. And then people have a whole bunch of children. You know what happens? A few years go on, and then they're depressed because they're not a grandparent. And then they become a grandparent, and one of the grandparents dies, and then they're depressed because they don't have their spouse. You see, it's, 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 it's the life cycle. It's life cycle. That this is life. But life, when you understand it, is that there always can be something you don't have. There always can be something you don't have, but yet whatever you focus on becomes most real to you. So think of how much more you do have. Think of how much more you do have. Because you know what? As great as it is to be married, the Bible also says that the unmarried, they can serve Yahweh completely. So it's great to be single, and it's great to be married. It's great to be married without children, because you can travel and go around and do all these things. And it's great to have children. It's great to have one child that you can give all your focus to. And it's great to have multiple children that they can all play together. Yahweh's timing. It's Yahweh's timing. And that's the point. When you're depressed and unhappy in your situation, you're depressed to one person, Yahweh. Yahweh, why ain't I married? Yahweh, why ain't I single? Yahweh, why don't I have children? Why don't I have ten children? You know? Whatever you're thinking you're lacking, you're showing it toward Yahweh. And everything in His time. Life is always changing. People will always come into your life. People are always going to leave your life. People are going to live. People are going to die. It's part of life. Doesn't mean we don't mourn. Of course we do. There's a time to mourn and there's a time to laugh. So when someone dies, you're not going to sit there and say, Oh, I'm not going to mourn because it's Yahweh's will. No, you mourn for the time and then you move on. You have to. You never forget the person. But you move on because that's part of life. There's a time to mourn and there's a time to laugh. There's a time to live. There's a time to die. But what we understand is Yahweh never leaves us. You must grasp His timing in your life. Like I said, it's a great time to be you. 
and it's a great time to be you. And I'll tell you something, there's about a million people out there that would love to be each and every one of you. Believe me when I say it. Appreciate today as tomorrow may be worse. I mean, you think about it. We've had a pretty good time here. What you're doing, you're volunteering, everything has been awesome. So who knows, maybe tomorrow will be better. You know what, maybe that pot of gold will just come shining down when we see the next rainbow and hit us all in the head. You know, maybe, maybe Yahweh will put all these things in our laps. Who knows? But you know, on the other side of it, maybe this is the best as it's going to get in the physical stance. We know worse coming. We know the tribulation is coming. We know the worst time Yahweh ever said is coming. And why not appreciate every day we got here now that is good? Why not appreciate it? Because you know what? I can't think of too many bad things around this community. I really can't. This is one of the greatest times of, of, of our life. And it's almost like a dream to me. To be around true believers that love each other. To care for each other. Everybody pulling together. You know, it's a great time to be us. And everybody that comes around at the school this year, people were just flawed. How so many people can live together, work together, serve each other without not even one problem. So it really is. It's a really great time to be you. And like I said, not knowing if tomorrow will bring. Embrace it. Embrace the wonderful things that Yahweh has blessed each and every one of us. Because like I said, we don't know. Tomorrow could be worth it. Death may take more of our loved ones. Sickness can immobilize us. It happens so quick. I'll be driving down the road. Drunken driver comes and smashes. And, and I could be crippled the rest of my life. So appreciate today I got legs. Appreciate yesterday we were walking around up there in the mountains. The day may come I'm too old to do it. You know? Each one of us was able to walk and see the beauty of Yahweh. What a wonderful day. Appreciate every moment that we have. If you don't focus on and grasp what you have today, you'll never fulfill your call. And it really, it's a beautiful calling that Yahweh has for each and every one of us. Like I said, most spend time regretting the past or worrying about the future. You must capture today. Embrace it. We go to Genesis 1.14. And Elohim said, Let light sources be in the expanse of the heavens to divide between the night and the day. And let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years. Light sources, simply recognizing Yahweh's clock, is simply his judicial order. And that's what Yahweh's timing is. Yahweh's timing is simply Yahweh's judicial order. Time from creation. There was a time for the flood. There was a time for the covenant with Abraham. There was a time for Israel to go into Egypt. We are just talking about it. And there was a time for Israel to leave Egypt. During the 215 years of hard bondage of the children of Israel in Egypt, many would have wanted to leave, right? But it wasn't the time. It wasn't the time. There's a time for the death angel to pass, and there was a time to put the blood on the door. If your timing was off, you would have died. Time to have sickness, time to be healed. You must understand everything in Yahweh's timing. One of the reasons why I much rather like the earlier Passover than the later one. <laughs> if I was early by a day, the blood is still on the door. <laughs> if I was late by a couple of hours, I'm dead. So there's a time for everything. Galatians 4.4 4 says, But when the fullness of the time came, Yahweh sent forth His Son, having come into being out of a woman, being subject to the Torah. Yeshua was not a druzy. He didn't just pop out of the leg of a pants of a man. There was a specific time that it was prophesied that He would come. Yahweh's timing. Everything in Yahweh's perfect timing. A time for the Messiah to appear, and a time for the Messiah to die. A time for the congregation to start, a time for the congregation to go into the wilderness, and a time for the congregation to come out of the wilderness. A time for Yahweh's work to cease in Jerusalem, and then a time at the end for Yahweh's work to start again in Jerusalem. Everything according to Yahweh's perfect timing. When you understand this concept, I'm telling you, it is so empowering in your life. Because if you can conquer time, if you can understand everything in Yahweh's timing, Satan has no hold over you. Because no matter what you're going through, you realize it's Yahweh's timing. That nothing is happening in your life.
that Yahweh is not allowing. Look at Job. You know, everything's going great, and boom, in one day he loses everything. But he kept his perspective, at least in the beginning. You know, naked I came into the world, naked I go out of the world. You know, he's understanding everything in Yahweh's timing. Revelation 9, and verse 13. Revelation 9, and verse 13. And the sixth angel cherubim, and I heard a voice at the four horns of the golden altar before Yahweh, saying to the sixth cherub who had the trumpet, Release the four cherubs, those having been bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four cherubs were released, those having been prepared for the hour and the day and the month of the year. And they should kill a third part of man. Time for peace and a time for war. These cherubs are there. They're ready for the day, the hour, and the year that this should happen. Here's a time for it. There's a time this will happen. There's a time it will not happen. In Revelation, almost everything is timed. Seven bowls, seven trumpets, seven seals. Almost everything in the book of Revelation is timed. Two witnesses will prophesy exactly 1,260 days. The beast power will reign exactly for 42 months. It's all timed. So again, by understanding this, by being in Yahweh's will, by understanding Yahweh's perfect timing... It will help us to get through it. And we'll never have doubt during it. Because it's Yahweh's timing. I want to go through some examples in the Bible that teach us this. Teach us about Yahweh's timing. To help us understand the concept a little bit better. First one is in 1 Kings 20. 1 Kings 20 and verse 35. And a certain man of the sons of the prophet said to his neighbor, By the word of Yahweh, please strike me. And the man refused to strike him. And he said to him, Because you have, listened, you have not listened to the voice of Yahweh, behold, you shall go out from me, and a lion shall kill you. And he left him, and a lion found him and killed him. Probably 999 times out of a thousand, you know, here's a man of Yahweh. He's having fear. I'm not going to hit this guy. He's a man of Yahweh. 999 times out of 1,000, it would have been the right decision to make. This happened not to be the time for that. <laughs> this was the time when he said, hit me, to hit him. Because it was Yahweh's time. Yahweh was trying to prove, make a point. We know the story that happened afterwards. You know, he's coming up and showing before the king. But here it was. Now, this guy was probably a good guy. He probably had character. He doesn't want to touch somebody that Yahweh put there. The problem what he didn't know was Yahweh's timing. He didn't understand Yahweh's timing. And literally he lost his life. So again, this is, this is not just a semantic type subject. This is life and death. Because in your life, things will come up that if you don't understand Yahweh's timing, you know, one of the things that talks about Matthew 24, the very first thing that Yeshua says to watch for for the end time is deception. Without understanding Yahweh's timing, you are prone to be deceived. You're prone to be deceived. And by understanding Yahweh's timing is simply throughout your whole life being within Yahweh's judicial order. Because as we're seeing here, you know, it's not, there's a time for crying, there's a time for laughing. Neither is wrong. All in their proper time. So you have to be able to understand Yahweh's will in your life to understand what time to laugh and what time to cry. You know, if you came into a funeral where everybody is crying and a, and a young child died and you started laughing, people would think you're crazy, you know, or, or, or worse, you know. So you have to understand the concept of this. You have to understand about being in the will of Yahweh and being able to follow His judicial order and His timing. 2 Samuel 6. 2 Samuel 6 and verse 5. And David and all the house of Israel were dancing before Yahweh with all instruments of fir wood and with lyres and harps and tambourines and with cornets and with cymbals. And when they came to the threshing floor of Nahon, and Uzzah reached out to the ark of the Elohim and took hold of it, for the oxen nearly upset it. Then the anger of Yahweh burned against Uzzah, and the Elohim struck him there. For the fault, and he died there by the Ark of the Elohim. Now again, sure he was a pretty good guy. Sure his intentions were good. 
999 times out of a thousand, if he was walking by and somebody's cart was falling and he tried to help the person, it would have been fine. He probably would have got a thank you very much, sir. This happened not to be that time. How important is it understanding Yahweh's timing? And what was the big, really the big problem here? We know before this, Yahweh clearly said the Ark of the Covenant should have been held by the Levites, held by Poles. So right off the bat, you know, they were outside of Yahweh's judicial order with bringing the Ark of the Covenant, you know, on a, on a cart with oxen instead of having the Levites follow it. What happens? This guy gets his life snuffed out from him. So important, extremely important to understand Yahweh's timing. How many people will say, it doesn't matter, he knows my heart. Sure, he knew Uzzah's heart made no difference. He died because he was outside of Yahweh's judicial order. 1 Samuel 26. 1 Samuel 26. And verse 4. And David sent spies, this is when Saul is after him, and Saul's going to be uh, put into his hand by Yahweh, and it's interesting what happened. And David sent spies, and he knew that Saul had certainly come to Nahon. And David rose up and came to the place where Saul camped. And David saw the place where Saul lay down, and Abner, the, the son of Ner, his army commander, and Saul were lying within the barricade. And the people were camping all around him. And David answered and said to Ahimelech, the Hittite, and to Abishai, the son of Zeruah, Joab's brother, saying, Who shall go down with me to Saul to the camp? And Abishai said, I will go down with you. And David and Abishai came to the people by night, and behold, Saul was lying down, sleeping within the barricade. And his spear was stuck into the earth at the head place. And Abner and all the people were lying all around him. And Abishai said to David, Elohim has shut up your enemy into your hand today. And now please let me strike him with a spear even to the earth one time, and I will not repeat it to him. And David said to Abishai, Do not destroy him, for who shall put forth his hand against the anointed of Yahweh and be guiltless? And David said, As Yahweh lives, except Yahweh strike him, or his day come and he dies, or he goes down and is devoured in battle, far be it from me by Yahweh, by putting forth my hand against the anointed of Yahweh. And now please take the spear at his head and the jar of water, Wow. Talk about understanding Yahweh's timing. Now, here's a guy that had every right to go there and kill Saul. Number one, Saul was coming trying to kill him. Number two, David was already anointed king. Number three, he was already told that he is going to be the ruler over Israel. And yet, David understood Yahweh's timing. How many times in our life do we jump the gun? How many times in our life do we go before Yahweh? How many times in our life something that actually would be Yahweh's will if we waited on Yahweh... Do we mess up by doing something to him? So that's the point here. I look at even sometimes people that will leave the congregation, or even somebody in leadership. You know, Does Yahweh set up one leader and take down another? Was it just like David said? When the time was right, Yahweh will take Saul out. And then he'll rightfully get to what's his. And yet sometimes people, because they can't wait on the time of Yahweh, because they're impatient, they're prideful, They'll take matters into their own hands, leave the congregation, and then many times fall away from there. Because they don't know Yahweh's timing. They don't know Yahweh's timing. There's a time to live, there's a time to die, there's a time to cry, there's a time to laugh, there's a time for war, there's a time for peace. And the same with leaders. Yahweh puts one in, Yahweh takes one out. Blessed be the name of Yahweh. So we have to realize in our life we need to take this example as a good one from David. That even though David was knew the will of Yahweh, he waited on Yahweh first. We want to make sure that we're not going before Yahweh and maybe taking a potentially good situation and messing it up by going before Yahweh that way. Genesis 45, another really good example, as we see from Joseph. Because sometimes in our life, like I said, many times we spend too much time regretting the past or worrying about the future. And many times we'll start to think and try to blame somebody. 
Oh, it was my father. Oh, it was my pastor. Oh, it was my brother. Oh, it was my boss. Oh, it was my this one, that one, or whoever. If only this didn't happen, if only that didn't happen. If only I didn't do this, if only this one didn't do this, if only that one didn't do this. But let's look at Yahweh's perfect timing for everything. Genesis 45 and verse 1. And this is when Joseph is before his brothers. And Joseph was not able to control himself in regard to those standing beside him. And he called, at, called, called out, Cause every man to go out from me. And no man stood before him as Joseph was making himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? And his brothers were not able to answer him, for they trembled before him. And Joseph said to his brothers, Now come near to me. And they came near. And he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be grieved, and let no anger be in your eyes, because you sold me here. For Elohim sent me before you to save life. Drop to verse 7. And Elohim sent me before you to put a remnant in the land for you, and to keep alive for you a great deliverance. And now you did not send me here, but Elohim. And he has placed me for a father to Pharaoh, and for a master in his house, and a ruler in all the land of Egypt. Wow, talk about perspective. Here's a guy that he's saying this after being 13 years in prison. You know, after being 13 years in prison, falsely accused, put in there, he had every right to say, I did nothing wrong. You know, he could have had the Job syndrome, but he didn't. He understood, he had perfect perspective of Yahweh's timing. He knew that that time in the prison was preparing him to build the humility that he needed to come and be the second to Pharaoh. He knew that everything that was there was Yahweh's timing. And he knew ultimately all those years that he sacrificed in the prison and in Egypt and all those things was to save the nation of Israel. And Yahweh sent him before to prepare him. What a great lesson we can learn from this. That sometimes when something happens, you know, there's a mean person that's not letting you do one thing. Maybe it's Yahweh's will that that's actually persons being used by Yahweh to push you in another direction. You know, when one door is closing, not waste time, maybe another door is opening. Like they always say, Yahweh never closes a door without opening a window. You have to think about this. That every single day of our life, as long as we're in Yahweh's will, He's timing something for us. So like I say, it doesn't matter where you end up. You know, something terribly goes wrong. You're inside of a prison. You don't sit there crying, crying, crying. Why did this happen to me? You look around and you say, Yahweh, what is my work now? What am I to do here? Okay, all this preparation, now I'm here. Who is it, Father? Let His Spirit speak to you. One of the things I constantly tell people when we go on mission trips, that we're sanctifying this time for Yahweh. Every minute of that trip, from the time you leave your house to the time you come home, is sanctified to Yahweh. And you have to daily, you have to be listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You have to hear it, because it's going to talk to you. Go here, go there, talk to this person, follow this man. And we see the scriptures filled with that. You know, with Saul, when Saul was knocked down on the road to Damascus, go into a town, you'll see this man. Go with him, follow him. Clearly Yahweh does that. Because we have to be being led by His Spirit in order to fulfill our purpose. And I'm telling you, the, as we get closer to the end, it's going to be more profound in major ways. But if we're in a pity party, or if we're only focusing on what we don't have or what we would want, we'll never hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You know, we, we'll lose that connection that we have. And like I said, being here, it's a local call. You don't even need your cell phone. We get that automatically by being close to Yahweh. Proverbs 16 and verse 9. Another great scripture. A man's heart plans his way, but Yahweh fixes his steps. So we make our plans, we do our plan of actions, we set our goals, but then Yahweh fixes the steps, and that's what comes into Yahweh's perfect timing. That when something doesn't go exactly the way we wanted it to, don't fight it. You know, don't fight it. Because Yahweh's perfect timing is taking us to where Yahweh wants us to be at that given time. Another great example of this is Hebrews 11. When we look at Moses... Hebrews 11 and verse 24.
Hebrews 11 and verse 24. Having become great, Moses, was, Moses by faith refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, having chosen rather to suffer affliction with the people of Elohim than for a time to have the joy, enjoyment of sin. Having counted the reproach of Messiah greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. And one of the things, if you're going to be within Yahweh's timing, you can't compromise. Because in Yahweh's timing, there'll never be sin, there'll never be compromise, there'll never be anything that contradicts his word. And I've seen people do it. You know, you're invited before the king of Bangladesh, and he puts pork before you, or you're going to eat it, not to offend the king. Or you're going to refuse it not to offend the real king. When we compromise, we totally take ourselves out of Yahweh's will and His timing. So again, it doesn't matter what the, the repercussions are. Because whatever the repercussions are to standing on the truth is Yahweh's timing. If those repercussions mean prison, or torture, or anything, it really doesn't make a difference. Because as long as you're in Yahweh's will then you can be confident in his perfect timing, just like Moses. If Moses would have, he could have logically thought, you know what, you know, a few years down the line, when the Pharaoh dies, I'll be Pharaoh, let me bide my time and wait my time, and then I'll just free the, the, the uh, Israelites. But he knew that would not be Yahweh's time. That would be his man-made thinking. So he knew, having chosen rather to suffer affliction with the people of Elohim, than for a time, to have enjoyment in sin. We have to think the same thing. Compromise will never put you in Yahweh's timing. And that's why I say sometimes we have to think to ourselves, the things that we're sorrowful of, what if Yahweh gave it to us? Watch what you pray for. What if He did give it to you? You know, if I was sorrowful that I missed my family, what if He gave me that? Am I going to be any better off around my family that are all unconverted? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And like I say, unfortunately, I hate to tell you this, but after you've been here, wherever you go from here, you will have the worst sorrow in your life of missing Israel. It's one of the things that comes with the territory. Whenever we leave, whether it's a day, a week, a month, once you've been in the presence of Yahweh, once you've been in His holy land, there's nowhere else on earth you can go that you don't, you don't you yearn with all your heart to be back here. And that's why I say there's a time for everything. There's a time to be here. There may be a time to be out of here. Embrace it every day of your life. Embrace this great gift that Yahweh's given. I look back now, 15 years of coming here, and I say, if I die tomorrow, I had the greatest 15 years a person could ever have. I couldn't imagine anybody that I've ever met or read or anything that had a better life than I've had. Being here in the land for 15 years, administrating the work of Yahweh, baptizing thousands of people, meeting people all over the world. You know, and physically we haven't had so much. Some years leaner than others, but that made no difference. The, the years we were lean or the years we were heavy made no difference on the happiness of being here in Yahweh's promised land. There's just nothing like it on earth. Yet at the same time, Yahweh's timing. Some people that come here because of that will convert to Judaism or take some roundabout means. And I would never sacrifice my eternal existence in this land for a temporary existence. And that's why I'm, I wouldn't convert to Judaism. I wouldn't do something illegal. I wouldn't do anything that would jeopardize my eternal life just to be here. Yahweh's perfect timing. There's a time to be here, there's a time to be out of here. And as long as the time to be here, Yahweh will keep the door open. And when the time to go, I do something else. I'm telling you, by understanding Yahweh's timing, it makes your life so peaceful. And it gives you full faith and assurance of everything you do that you're in Yahweh's will. Our job is to stay in the will of Yahweh and to follow His timing. To follow His judicial order, to be within His will and understand wherever we are in life, it is because of Yahweh's timing. If Uzzah had helped anybody else's cart, he wouldn't have died. There's a time to have a baby. It's a beautiful thing in life. When you're married, it's a blessing. When you're not married, you get stoned to death. It's that simple. There's a time to have children. There's a time not to have children. There's things that Yahweh ordains as a beautiful thing. There's relations with a man and a woman within marriage. There's a time it's abominable to him, and it's the death penalty. 
There's a time for everything. Time for everything. If the Israelites put the blood on the door on the 15th of Aviv, as many believe, they would have all died. They would have all died. If that's not enough to go by an early 14th Passover, I don't know what is. <laughs> but very clearly, if they were a day late, it would have been too bad. Must stay within Yahweh's judicial order. People fight Yahweh's timing because they don't seek His will. It's that simple. When we seek Yahweh's will, we're not fighting His timing. We need to seek the face of Yahweh daily. Like it says in Psalm 23, Yahweh is my shepherd. I will not lack. He leads me beside you know, living waters in green pastures. Yahweh gives us everything that we need every day of our life. Yahweh is my shepherd, I will not lack. Learn the lesson from Joseph and David to stop blaming others for our trials that are not caused by others, but simply are Yahweh's timing. Everything in our life is Yahweh's timing. And that's why, like we said, even if we remember when Absalom was coming after David and he's fleeing the city, and Shammai is there throwing rocks, one of the sons of Zerula wanted to come, let me cut off his neck, that dead dog, and what does David say? Leave him alone. This might be Yahweh's will for me. Maybe Yahweh is having him come and stone me. Because remember what Yahweh said when he committed the sin with uh, killing Uzziah the Hittite, and then he took his son away and, and he told him, you know, that what was going to happen, that the, the, the fruit of his loins was going to come against him, and and he would have war around his camp. And when that was happening, when Absalom was coming after him, you know, here he is, he's crying, you know, and because he's realizing this might just be his punishment for the dumb things he did in life. And when you look and when he's crying afterwards for Absalom, 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 I believe a big part why he was sorrow so much, not even as much as Absalom being dead, but the thought that he thought he might have caused it. By being outside of Yahweh's timing. You know, because his sin caused this curse that brought what Absalom did. And at the end of the days, he saw, you know, one son killing another son, his head of the army killing this son. All because at times he was outside of Yahweh's timing. Yet, in other ways, he knew it very good, as we see. People fight Yahweh's timing because they don't seek His will. We need to seek the face of Yahweh daily. We need to learn the lessons of Joseph and David. Romans 8 and verse 28, a very, very encouraging scripture. Romans 8, 28. But we know that to the one's loving Elohim, all things work together for good. To those being called according to purpose. So again, time and chance happens to everybody. But even at the same rate, to the children of Yahweh, Yahweh is always in control. Nothing is going to happen to you that He's not going to allow. And everything is going to work out for your benefit. And He knew them in advance. And He sealed them with the likeness of the image of His Son. That He might be the firstborn of many brothers. But whom He marked in advance, these He also called. And whom He called, these He also justified. And we justified these, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If Yahweh be for us, who can be against us? Truly he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up on behalf of us all, how will he not freely give all things to us with him? Who will bring any charge against the elect of Yahweh? Yahweh is the one justifying. Who is he condemning? It is Messiah who has died, but rather also is raised. And is also at the right hand of Yahweh, who also makes intercession on our behalf. Who shall separate us from the love of Messiah? So tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? Even it is, it has been written, For your sake we are killed all the day, we are counted as lambs to the slaughter. But in all these things we are more than conquerors through him loving us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor cherubs, nor rulers, nor armies, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any other thing created, will be able to separate us from the love of Yahweh and Messiah, Yeshua, our Master. Really, really great scripture. Must embrace this, and we must live for eternity, not time. Like I said, this too shall pass. This time that we're living in, it's going to get worse, we know that. But it will pass in Yahweh's time. 
And in Yahweh's timing, Yeshua will return to the Mount of Olives. In Yahweh's timing, His kingdom will be set up. The last scripture I want to go over is Hebrews 11. We read a little bit there before. I just want to read one more. Because like we said, the Bible is not finished yet. The book of Acts is still being written today. Who knows how many things that we might be doing right here, being recorded for that book. But also Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. The chapter of faith is still being recorded. And the acts that we show are also being recorded. And we want to make sure that we're being recorded as a good example of someone who's showing faith, not somebody who's lacking it. But in Hebrews 11, verse 32, And what more shall I say? For time will fail me telling about Gideon, Barak, and also Samson and Jethro, and also David and Samuel and the rest of the prophets. So, you know, I'm giving you a few small stories and examples of people in Yahweh's timing. But like it says here, we could go on all day talking about all these people, brothers and sisters of faith. Who through faith overcame kingdoms, worked out righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the mouth of the sword, acquired power from weakness, became strong in war, made armies of foreigners to yield, restored to women their sons, raised people from the dead. But others were beaten to death, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others received trial of mockings and of scourgings, yea, more bonds and of prison. They were stoned, they were tried, they were sawed in half. They died by the murder of sword. They went about in sheepskins and in goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and ill-treated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts, in mountains, in caves, and in the holes of the earth. And having obtained witness through the faith, these all did not obtain the promise. Yahweh having foreseen something better concerning us, that they should not be perfected without us. Who knows in the coming days if we may be in some of the very caves that these people I just read about are in. The Bible does say there's a time where if we are here in the land of Israel, we will flee city to city. We will not get through all the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes. And who knows if we will be blessed and accounted worthy to be in some of these very caves that these great men of faith were also in. They all died awaiting the promise. Life comes and life goes. And as we're seeing as we get older, it moves very fast. We must understand that every place we're at, every situation we're in, Yahweh has provided for our good, and we need to redeem the time. We need to embrace this fact and bear fruit for Him. Live for Him and Yeshua alone. Keep our focus on His timing. There's a time for everything. We just need to, in faith, believe this, and in faith know, whatever trial we may go through, that this too shall pass. And the kingdom really is coming very quickly. You are, I've said this before, one out of five million people. Number that's hard to grasp. Whenever I see like something like the Rose Bowl, and you see a hundred thousand people, if you've ever been to a sporting event, when it's over, it takes hours and hours and hours to get to the parking lot and get out and all the traffic from 100,000 people. Think of 5 million. And you're one out of 5 million people. To be a literal child of Yahweh, an heir of Yeshua of the universe. It really is a great time to be here. Yahweh bless.